Hey everybody, I, I just quickly wanted to go over a couple different things um, regarding some long positions. And I know this is a little, this is a deviation from what we normally do uh, here in the down to trade day trade room. Uh, typically we're trading uh, credit spreads, but you know, recently over the last couple months, month or so, uh, we've seen some really good success uh, with long single options um, for a couple really good reasons. Now we do have members that that trade these in a couple different ways. And we can discuss the, the advantages, dis disadvantages, pros and cons of each of those really quickly. And then what I'd like to do is I'd like to skip over to our uh, paper trade account in thinkorswim. And I can kind of show you how to set up um, uh, the mechanics of that, uh, that part of the trade um, is set up a template um, and, and give you my thoughts on how I personally would do it. But the, the idea is this, when we're looking at long positions, obviously, uh, long posi when you're buying an option, you're going to be paying a debit. Your potential loss is capped. is is capped at at the debit you pay for the option, but your potential profit is maximized, uh, essentially unlimited, uh, depending on which direction you go. But I, I think we all understand that. But there's there's a couple there's a couple caveats that that some traders might not fully grasp when it comes to how other aspects or other factors might affect premium, because it's, it's not just the direction of the underlying asset that affects premium, but there are, there are other aspects that also affect premium. So let's say for instance, we got into a long put right here. Let's say we got into a long put right here. Now, obviously, that long put would be a bearish position and we would want to see the, the underlying um, continue down or we would want to see um, a dump in the market in order for um, us to be profitable in that, that long put. Now, remember, because we're getting into a long position, we want premiums to go up, right? Where we want to buy low and sell high. Well, for a long put, that occurs when premium dumps. Conversely, for a long call, that would be a bullish position and premiums would actually go up when the underlying goes up. So obviously, we, so I, I think everyone really understands how the price of the underlying does affect the premium depending on whether you're in a long put or a long call. But I wanted to discuss how implied volatility can affect the the two different positions again whether it's a long put or a long call now as we all know typically when price of the underlying or let, let's look at the s p when the s p uh rallies we typically see implied volatility go down now how does implied volatility affect that position well, or how does implied volatility uh, more accurately affect premiums? Well, as we all know, when we see implied volatility go down, that typically will push premiums down. And you might say, well, isn't that bad? I thought we want premiums to go up when we're in a long position. And that's true. So in a long call, oftentimes IV or implied volatility is working against you because typically when the, when price is going in your bullish direction, that's typically accompanied by a drop in implied volatility. Again, there are exceptions, but typically you'll see a drop in implied volatility, which means that uh, premiums will, uh, will tend to stay low and that's bad. However, if you're in a long put, long put, um, and it, obviously you want price to drop. Well, that is often accompanied by a rise or an increase in implied volatility. And when, when implied volatility increases, that pushes premiums up. So what's really nice about this is when you're in a long put, you'll get to your take profits a lot faster. When, you, when you're, again, that's because IV is pushing premiums in your direction. However, when you're in a long call, IV 
is kind of working against you. Even if price is moving in your, your direction, IV will often slow premiums from rising uh, fast enough. So again, there there are differences and you have to know the mechanics of all of these. Again, I'm, I'm briefly going over them. I obviously, um, I, I do a much deeper dive in, 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 in our coaching sessions, but this is, this is meant to be just a really brief video. That said, what can you do to take advantage of this? Well, if you anticipate that price is going to make a quick move to the downside, which we've seen a lot lately, right? In this particular market, we've seen, you know, slow rises in price, and then suddenly you'll see a drastic drop. Well, not only is that set up perfectly for a long put because long puts are bearish, but also we see that's often accompanied by a spike in implied volatility, which can get you to your take profit on a long put much faster. So these very fast and very aggressive spikes or drops that we've been seeing in the market are perfectly primed and set up for these long put scalps. And I say scalps because our intention is to get in and get out pretty quickly. Okay. So, um, now you might say, well, what about scalping to the upside? You can, you can, and you'll get to your, your take profits a little bit slower, but you certainly can. And we've, we, we've seen times where price reverses and bounces really quick lately. This has been happening in the market a lot lately. So believe me, we have members who scalp um, long calls as well. Uh, me personally, I've only been scalping in my personal accounts. I've only been scalping um, long puts, but believe me, we, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, like I said, members in, at down to trade who have been doing it successfully in both directions. Um, that said, now that we kind of understand, oh, and also the idea for me personally is to get in and get out quickly. I'm not looking for a home run here. I'm not looking to make two or three, five, ten bucks on this trade. Could it? Yeah, it can. And it could do it really quickly, depending on how aggressive that, that, uh, dump is. And also how aggressive the spike in IV is, but me, I'm just looking for a, a, a quick scalp. Why? Because typically we see these aggressive moves, um, in price are short lived. They dump. Oops. Let's try that again. Typically you see these. Come on. You see these uh, these runs to the downside occur very fast and aggressive, and then they reverse. And I don't want to get caught in this reversal because, um, again, in a long put, that IV, if it runs against you, that IV is going to start dumping, which means that premium in your position can decay really fast. So... Uh, if I didn't make this clear before, in a long put, you get to your take profit faster, but you can also get to your stop faster. In a long call, typically you get to your uh, take profit slower, but you can also get to your stop slower. So there's a trade off with either either direction. Anyways, let's move forward. Now that we kind of know what kind of position we're looking for, um, let's quickly... Uh, oh, by the way, so what I what I want to do is if it goes in my direction, take profit pretty quickly. If it goes against me, get stop out fairly quickly. All right. So the position I'm going to set up in my brokerage or in my platform is going to be an OCO bracket. So I'm going to have an OCO. I'm going to have my original entry at whatever strike. And again, um, we'll, we'll we'll talk about where to set up your your strike or which strike to go with, whether you go with something that's far out of the money or closer to at the money or even in the money. Um, we'll talk about the advantages, disadvantages of all of those here shortly when we get over to the platform or when we get over to the uh, uh, thinkorswim trade uh, paper trade account. But um, again, the idea is I'm going to set up a, an entry with an OCO um, bracket. Okay. So let me go ahead and switch over to thinkorswim. Okay. So again, the idea is we're going to set up a, a, a long put and we'll actually create a template for this. But before we do, let's talk about the differences between 
being far out of the money, uh, closer to the money, uh, at the money, or even a little bit in the money. Now, because gam uh, the closer you get to the money and further into the money you get, um, what actually happens is gamma is increasing. In other words, the rate of change of the rate of change of price or on premium to price is actually increasing the closer you get to the money, which means the closer you are to the money or the further you are in the money, the faster you're going to get to your take profit and your stop. Which means if I'm going to be closer to the money, I want to set my stop and my take profit further away. Whereas if I'm a little further out of the money, I can set my, my stop and my take profit a little bit closer. Now, um, it, it, it depends on what, you know, what you have set up for your risk reward ratio. Uh, it, let's say you're looking for a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. Uh, where you're risking the same amount as uh, your reward. In other words, let's say I want to capture 50, 50 cents or I want to lose 50 cents. That would be a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. I might set it, I might try to get in way out here where my premium is only around a dollar. Okay. And that way um, I'll set my, let's say I get in for a dollar. I might have my take profit set at a dollar 50 and I have my stop set at 50 cents. Done. Whereas if I'm a little bit closer, um, I might make it a little bit wider. I might make my, my OCO bracket a little bit wider. But that depends on you and your comfort level. I suggest you paper trade it for a while. Um, so let's talk about how to set up this template in your paper trade account um, or in your live account. But I would, again, highly suggest you do this in your paper trade account. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a template. And this template can be used... Um, uh, at any time, you only need to set this template up one time and then uh, I'll show you how to call it back up at any point. So we're just going to choose any long put. I don't care what it is. We're just, it, we're setting up a template right now. So it doesn't really matter. But what we're going to do is how this template is going to work is we're going to set up our entry order. And at the same time, we're also going to set up an OCO order. Remember an OCO bracket is an order that has both a stop loss and a take profit in that in that order, and if e when either one of those are triggered, then it will cancel the other one that was not triggered, which is really nice. So if you get triggered on your take profit, it'll fill your take profit, and then it'll also cancel your stop loss. Really cool, and vice versa. If you get stopped out instead, it'll it'll fill your stop loss and it'll cancel your take profit, which is really nice. So how we're going to set that up is here using an advanced order of first triggers OCO. And what this means is this first order, once this first order is triggered, it will, uh, it'll start your OCO bracket um, to begin to work. So you'll see how that works here. So what I'm going to do is I've got this first one uh, all ready to go. I'm going to right click and now I'm going to build my OCO bracket. So I'm going to choose create opposite order. And so there's one of our orders. This might be our take profit. And now I'm going to right click on that entry order again. And I'm going to choose create opposite order again. And so now one of these we'll use for our take profit. The other one we'll use for our stop loss. So let's go ahead and use this bottom one as our stop loss. So I'm going to change the order type for this bottom one to be stop. And you can use stop limit order if you want. I personally use stop order, uh, stop market. Um, okay, so there we go. This We have our original entry order, this green one, this long put. And then we have our um, OCO bracket. The OCO bracket is comprised of our limit order, which is our take profit, and our stop order, which is our stop loss. Cool. But the big question is, how do we set up where do we set up our price on our um, on our um, OCO bracket? Well, what I'd like to do is I like to set it, I like to link it to the original order, to the entry order, uh, based on where it's triggered in. So I'll change the link type to both of them to trigger. And now it's going to set my OCO bracket based on where I was actually triggered into the, or where my my entry order was actually filled. Does that make sense? So 
and let's say I was, you, you, you'll see how that works. So uh, I'm going to set it based on trigger. And what I'm going to do is, okay, I, my, my take profit, I might say I want it to be, I don't know, 75 cents above wherever I'm filled. And I want my stop loss to be, I don't know, 55 cents below wherever I'm filled. Because remember, um, with a um, with a long put, if you're not used to long puts, uh, you want you you we we buy low, sell high. So we want the premium to go up to our take profit, and our stop loss is obviously going to be below our entry. So again, our limit order is going to be 75 cents above wherever we're filled. That's what this trigger means. And our stop loss is going to be 55 cents below whatever we're filled. And again, that's what this trigger means. And that's it. That's the order. It's ready to go. So what we're going to do is I'm going to save this as a template. And obviously you can change this to however you want and you can play with it. Um, again, I would, I would do this in paper trading for a, quite a while. Um, and obviously I'm going to go ahead and save the template right here. Um, I hope you, you all can see this window, but I'm going to change this. I'm going to call it, I don't know, long put or no, no, no. I'll, I'll call it long option because you can use this on both um, uh, long calls long and long options. So I'll just call it long option with or long single option with OCO. Call it whatever you want. Um, call I'm just going to call it long single option with OCO. Okay. So now we have that template saved. Now, if I want to put on a long put on, at the 5575, I'll just simply right click uh, at on the ask of the 5575. I'll hover over buy custom and I'll choose long single option with OCO. Boom. There it is. Ready to go. So what happens is, if if I get let's say I got filled at 520, that will oh, well if I click confirm and send, what will happen is all the only one that will be working is this top one. These two will be waiting for that top one to get filled before they begin to work. That's the magic of this advanced order type. First triggers OCO. It says that the OCO bracket doesn't start working until the first order, this entry order, is triggered. Cool. So um, let's say I get filled at 520, then my take profit will be set automatically 75 cents above that. And my stop loss will be set automatically 55 cents below that. Okay. I'm going to try to make this happen quickly and head over to my monitor tab so we can see it happen. Um, so... Yeah, you know what? Let's just make it a little bit more. Oh, hang on. Give me a second. It's at 450 now. I'll, I'll set it a little bit lower. Uh, so I give myself time to get over and watch it actually fill. Because I want I want I want you all to see how this actually works. Again, notice that the only one that is working is my entry order. It's the only one that is actually working. I don't know if I'm going to get filled. Um, darn it. Premium is going away from me right now. Um, I'm, I'm not even paying attention to the chart because this is just a paper trading account. So I don't really care, uh, you know, what's actually doing. I just kind of want to show you the mechanics of, of how this actually works. Um, but you'll notice that again, the OCO brackets are the OCO orders are not working right now. The only one that's trying to get filled is the, uh, the entry order. Uh, let's, I'm going to, I'm going to try to get it filled. I got to get over to my monitor tab before it gets filled. Should be getting filled any second. I don't know how wide the uh, bid ask spread is here. So there we go. We got filled. Okay. Now watch what happens. Notice that the only one that was filled was my entry order. 
What do you notice about these now? Uh, the OCO brackets, both of them are working. But once one, you see here, they're linked. You see this link over here? That means once one of them is filled, the other one is going to be canceled. Now you'll notice that my take profit is set above my fill. I was filled at 450. My take profit is set at $5.30 and my stop is set at $4. So we'll let that just sit here and stew for a little bit. I don't know which one's going to, I'm not even paying attention to the chart right now for this example. So I have no idea which one's actually going to get filled. Uh, but uh, it looks like price is going up. So it looks like the underlying is actually working against us a little bit right now, which is why we're getting closer and closer to our stop loss. So here pretty shortly, we might get triggered on our stop loss. Any second. Yeah, we're probably going to get triggered right now. Now watch what happens. Again, boom. We were filled with a little bit of slippage. Uh, our our stop loss was actually set at three dollars, four dollars, and um, we were actually filled at three ninety. But what did you notice? You noticed that the take profit was uh, canceled. I didn't have to manually cancel it. I don't have to sit here and try to remember, oh shoot, I've got to cancel that that other side of the uh, OCO order. It's going to do it for me automatically once one of those um, is triggered. Okay, so that's the beauty of of our um, our template or, or, or our template using OCO bracket. Let's go over a couple more aspects. And again, that one, it took, how long did that take? That took... I don't know, a minute and 20 seconds, give or take a minute and 10 seconds. Let's see how fast that happens when we're at the money. Oh. Uh, long single option with OCO. Let's just, we're going to keep the same distance and let's see how fast this happens. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, it sounds like I'm filled. Perfect. And again, what I want to do is you'll see because gamma is so much higher, chances are we're going to get filled on one of our take profits or our stop loss much faster than we did um, on the, on our one that was a little bit further out of the money. Um, again, but you know, if price doesn't do anything or implied volatility doesn't do anything, then it, this example will be moot. But um, I, again, Typically, the closer you get to the money, the faster you're going to trigger your stop loss and your take profit, which is why typically if someone is trading closer to the money, they typically widen their stop a little bit, right? Um, anyways, uh, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. And let's go ahead and put on one other trade. This one will set a little bit further out of the money. Oh, there we go. Looks like I got I got triggered out of that. That trade. Let's take a look. Yeah, I got stopped out on that one. Uh, that one took a little bit less than a minute. Okay. If we were to try to take one, you know, further out of the money, it'll probably take a lot longer to get filled again because gamma, the 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 rate of change of the rate of change of premium to price will be a little bit lower here. So again, just to kind of show you, oh, whoops, sorry. Let's try that again. I accidentally chose sell custom. I, I don't want to do a naked, uh, naked sell. Uh, so long single option with OCO. All right, so while we're waiting for that to fill, and then it, it might take a little while, it might take several minutes for the OCO to then get triggered once this is filled. But let's just see where this wants to go. I'm going to try to get filled, so bear with me. Okay, I got triggered into that trade, and we'll see how, how long it takes to... Oops. Let's see how long it takes to actually get filled on one of these. Again, because I'm further out of the money, we typically would expect it to take a little bit longer, which is why 
Um, the further out of the money you go, typically uh, traders will tighten their stops up a little bit. Um, that said, it's important to know how to set up while we're doing that. It's also important to know how to set up this OCO bracket. If you're just in a long put. Um, and here's what I mean. I met what? Imagine you get into uh, some long put. Oh, by the way, if you wanted, you can also do this with a, a long call. So let's go ahead and set up a long call. Oops. If I wanted to get into this long call, for instance, I can hover over buy custom, long single option with OCO. And there it is. And again, it's going to work the exact same way. I can confirm and send this off and be completely fine. But here's what I want to do instead. Um, instead of sending this off as a template, I'm just going to get into uh, this long put. I'm sorry, this long call. Nick, uh, just as it is right here. In other words, I'm not going to use the template. I'm not going to enter with an OCO bracket because I kind of want to go over how to build a, an OCO bracket organically because this is a very important aspect to the mechanics of the trade. Uh, so let's just try to get in this long call real quick. Again, I this paper trade, I don't care what direction or I don't, I don't care how which direction premium action goes. Okay. So there I am. I, I'm also now in this long call. So now let's go over how to build an OCO bracket if you're already in the position. And the reason this is important is because some, you, let's say let's say you're you're in a position and you've got your OCO bracket working. And let's say I wanted to tighten my stop. Well, I could right click and choose cancel replace. And then I can tighten my stop up to, let's say, I don't know, 70 cents. Confirm and send. That's fine. And, and, and you could do that. You could tighten your stop that way. Um, but what if you accidentally, instead of cancel replace, what if you accidentally clicked on cancel OCO group? Uh-oh. If you did that, you have to know how to get out of your OCO or you have to know how to um, build an OCO group manually. So let's go over that right now. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to build an OCO group manually for this call position that we're already in. We already have an OCO group for this put uh, for this long put. So let's build a um, manually build a, an OCO group for this long call that we're in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, I'm going to right click and choose create opposite order. And now instead of choosing first triggers OCO, because I, I'm not going to choose first triggers because we're not building the first entry order. I'm just going to choose OCO. So I'm, I'm right now at this point, all I'm doing is I'm building an OCO. So we have one of the orders or one of the legs of that OCO uh, group. Let's go ahead and right click on it and to create duplicate order. There we go. So we'll use one of these for our take profit. And again, use one of these for our stop loss. I'll go again, use the bottom one as our stop. Now we can't link it to the original order because there is no original order. So we have to know what we got in for. Uh, we got triggered on that uh, long call at 235. So if I wanted to set this up um, 75 cents uh, higher, I would just set that up at 310. And if I wanted to set this up uh, 55 cents lower, I would just set this up at 180. Oops, not 1080, 180. I mean, you can set it up wherever you want. I'm just trying to keep things consistent for this particular video. But um, there it is. There's my OCO bracket. Again, we always check. Limit higher. Stop lower. We always look at our contract size. We're set to go. So now I can confirm and send. And what we'll see over here on the monitor tab is both of those are now working. Again, our stop is at one, I'm sorry, 310. And our take profit is at, oh, I'm just, oh, I was looking at the, the put. I apologize. The, the stop on our call is at 180. The take profit on our call is at 310. Apologize. Um, so yeah, both of these are working. Again, you'll notice that it's taking much longer because 
premiums don't move as fast the further out of the money you get. They just don't. And that's because of gamma, like we talk about all the time. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to discuss. Now, if you have any questions regarding the mechanics of how this works, remember here down to trade in, in our coaching sessions, when we talk about mechanics, mechanics actually describes two things. Um, when we teach mechanics, we, we not only discuss the mechanics of how to get into and out of the trade like this mechanics also, um, involves theory. So th the mechanics of actually how to get into and out of the trade in your particular, um, platform that, that describes the practical application side of mechanics, but mechanics also, um, involves theory and if you don't precisely understand how implied volatility it affects the premium on your particular trade, hit me up at down to trade, uh, go to down to trade.com. I say, hit me up, send me an email, a Candon at down to Um, I'd, I'd love to get you in on a coaching session. Again, if you, if you, if you're a member of down to trade, you get a free 30 minute coaching session and we can certainly delve into them um, in, into the mechanics of, how not just implied volatility, but how theta decay affects your particular uh, position. Uh, it's going to be different whether it's a, you know, uh, a long call versus a, um, a, a call credit spread or a call debit spread. And so, and so knowing how each of these factors um, affect your particular position that you are in is extremely important. And, and I'd, I'd love to sit down and talk with you about it. If you do have any questions. Um, other than that, does anybody have any questions before I stop the video? Uh, is there anything that you think I should also bring up? Let's see. It doesn't look like anybody. Look at this. We're still in these positions. And again, it's because that gamma, if, if you don't, but again, if you don't really understand what gamma is or, and how that really is going to affect your trade, let me know, reach out to me. I love questions. I, I thrive on questions. Um, so you believe me, you're not going to. You're not going to be bothering me if you send me uh, any kind of question at all. So um, Bruce says, very helpful. Save these templates. Uh, good, dude. I love it. I love it. And it's, it's, it, my, my advice to you is going to be practice, 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 practice with your templates and without your templates. Um, typically, just so you know, uh, for anybody watching the video, not just you, Bruce, but anybody watching these videos, I typically advise my students and in my coaching sessions, I, we teach, I teach everybody how to build these templates, but then I advise them don't use these templates for about a week or two uh, because I want you to get the practice of building them organically just in case you do exactly what remember uh, before I was saying, what if you accidentally, instead of uh, let's say you wanted to modify your stop. I've done this where I, I, I go to modify my stop and instead of clicking cancel replace order, I, I accidentally click, cancel OCO group. And it's like, no, 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 no. Oh shoot. Well now I got to go back in there and I've got to build it organically. And so you have to be very confident. I'll do it quickly here. Um, you have to be pretty, pretty, uh, confident in your ability to, to follow these steps quick, uh, quickly. I'm, oh, I'm going to do this. I've already kind of described how to do it. So I'm just going to uh, do it quickly. Oh, whoops. Um, this is kind of a bad example, but you, you kind of get the idea of, and I think this one was at one, 180, 185, something like that. I can't remember exactly where we had it, but it, it's just that quick and simple. If you wanted to set, uh, rebuild it and send it off. Sounds like one of them was already uh, triggered. Oh yeah. My take profit was triggered on that one. Okay, cool. I didn't realize it was already up there, but uh, anyways. Um, so yeah, I, again, my advice typically when I'm teaching templates is practice it organically, manually, build them manually. In other words, get a, go to your paper trade account, get into a trade, build your OCO brackets manually. Do that for about a week or do it several times until you're extremely proficient, extremely fast at it. And then, uh, then once you get the mechanics down and you're, you're very comfortable with it, now you can cheat and uh, use your, um, 
use your template. Again, template's really simple. Hover over, right click, buy custom, long single options. It's ready to go already. I always check, by the way, before I have this habit, anytime before I hit confirm and send, I'm not allowed to click confirm and send before my eyes always drift over here. It's just a habit of mine. My eyes will always drift over here and I look at the, the, um, the contract size. And if that's correct, then I'm allowed to confirm send. Done. Anyways. Okay. So uh, I guess that'll be it for this video. Um, I can't think of anything else that I want to say about it. So other than that, um, again, if you have any questions, uh, reach out to me at down to trade. Um, I'd love to sit down with you at a coaching session and we can go over this in really good detail. And um, that way you don't have, you can be a lot more comfortable in your trades. All right, everybody. Happy trading. Take care.